Hello, everybody. Welcome to this lecture, um, creating uh, threads with a thread class. This lecture comes from chapter 16 of my book, C Sharp for Artists, second edition. And uh, this uh, section, creating managed threads with a thread class, starts on page 452. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to use a thread class. Um, when you create threads with a thread class, which is located in the system.threading namespace, you're creating what's called a managed thread. Okay, and uh, managed threads allow you to start stop threads and you get a, a little bit more control. But, you know, even though you can do a lot with these managed threads, the, you know, the, you really only need to do a couple things, right? Start it, stop it, and, you know, if you wanted to get a little bit more fancy, you could. But generally speaking, you start a thread, it runs to completion, and then it's done. It, it finishes. But to illustrate the difference between an app with uh, just one single main thread and a multi-threaded app, I'm going to go back to my single and multi-threaded vacation example. Okay, so this code is uh, comes along with the book. So let me go ahead and switch to uh, Notepad++ and, and uh, demonstrate the code. So we're in chapter 16, and we're going to go single-threaded vacation. Okay, so pull up uh, Notepad++, and let's take a look at that code. Okay. So I have... Notepad++ loaded up with the code for single threaded vacation. Let's just go through the uh, the code. It's not uh, not hard. Okay, there's no threading in this particular particular version because it's single threaded vacation, right? Like, well, to take that back. The only thread is the main method. Okay, so let's start from the top. So essentially. Uh, I, I'm using the same metaphor I used in the single threaded vacation. So, uh, I got, uh, I'm either hungry or I'm, or I'm thirsty, right? And, um, I have a constructor which sets hungry to true and thirsty to true. Um, let's run down first to the main method and go through it. And then I'll go through the fetch drink and the fetch food methods. Okay. So, here I've got the main method. Let me choke up on this window, make it easier to scroll. Okay, so main method's right there. Okay, so uh, public static void main, I'm down here, starting on line 50. Single threaded vacation. So I create me a new instance of this class, single threaded vacation, and I print out to the console relaxing. All right? And then while single threaded vacation is hungry and single threaded vacation is thirsty, right? So I got two of these Boolean values while those things are both true. Uh, SVTV, a single threaded vacation, fetch drink and fetch food. So what you should see is, uh, well, let's go up to, to the fetch drink. Okay. So we're, we're going to go fetch a drink first, right? We're relaxing. Now it's like, Oh, we got to go get a drink. So I'm calling the fetch drink method. And I say it's a thousand steps to the bar. So, you know, 2000 there and back, right? So for int i equals zero, i less than steps to the bar times two, i plus plus. And now if i mod a hundred, so in other words, every hundredth um, dot, I'm going to write fetching drinks. So uh, essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know, every hundredth um, step, right? Every hundredth step, I'm going to print, I'm going to change lines, like write a new line, and I'm going to write fetching drinks. Otherwise, if I take a step, and it's not, uh, you know, multiple of 100, that's the modulus operator, I'm going to uh, console.write a, a period. So, and I did that to save space, right, in the console. So, it's going to go dot, dot, dot. You should see relaxing, and then you'll see dot, 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 and then carriage return, fetching drinks. And then dot, 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 you know, fetching drinks, dot, 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 fetching drinks. And then when I'm done, I write another line to the console and then I set thirsty equals false. Now, um, 
fetch food. Then the fetch food method kicks in, right? Because it's single threaded in this main method, I'm going to run this fetch drink method until it stops. And then I'm going to call, because it's the next uh, method in the, in the thread, uh, the fetch food. So the fetch drink method starts and runs to completion. Then the fetch food method runs and, st- and runs and to completion. And then finally, you know, I'm back to relaxing. And by that time, the program ends, right? So the fetch food is the same thing, right? Different name to protect the innocent. So steps to the grill equals a thousand. Um, I could, you know, combine that, right? But just to make it more clear what was going on. Um, and then for int i equals zero, i less than steps to the grill times two, i plus plus. And again, if it's a mod of 100, then write a line to the console and then write fetch food. Great. Otherwise, write a dot. So, uh, okay, and then, uh, you know, every, if it's not a, a mod of 100, then I write uh, a, a dot, just like up here in the fetch drink method. So let's take a look at how this code looks when it runs. So I'm going to open up a command prompt. I'm going to bring that down here, make it a little bit smaller. Uh, that might be perfect, actually. And uh, go to the code, chapter 16. Single thread of vacation. Okay, so I got to compile it. Okay, let me change directories. Uh, CSC star dot CS. All right, um, now let me run it. Let me clear the screen first. Okay. Okay, uh, here we go. So, fetching drinks, fetching food. So, if we expand that and scroll up a little bit, I've got fetching drinks. And then uh, I go relaxing, right? Fetching drinks. And then dot, 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 dot. Fetching drinks, dot, 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 right? And then once that method finishes, then fetch food gets called. So, you can see single thread, all right? Things are executed one right after the other. There's no parallelism, right? Okay, well, let's com- combine, compile, compare that with the multi-thread vacation. So let me load up the multi-thread vacation. Okay, um, grab Notepad plus plus. Let me unload single-thread vacation and load up multi-thread vacation. Okay. <clears throat> It looks a whole lot like single thread vacation from the fact that, you know, I've got my hungry and thirsty um, variables. I've got my fetch drink and fetch food method, and those haven't changed. But my main method's got a little bit more going on, so let me pull up that main method so we can see it better. Okay, so let's go through main. I've got multi thread vacation MTV, okay? Thread. Now I'm creating a new thread using the thread class. So thread drink fetcher. I have a drink fetcher thread, and I give it. Uh, I say new thread, and then MTV fetch drink. And then uh, another thread I create food fetcher, and I say new thread uh, MTV dot fetch food. Okay. So these methods here. Uh, like the fetch drink method, fetch drink is defined up here. So that's my fetch drink method. So when I create my thread, I say, hey, run this method. And this is an instance method. Okay, so that's an example of an instance method. I, It's not static, right? So it's an instance method. And I have to create me an instance of multi-thread vacation to, uh, to actually access that method. And then for my food fetcher, I pass it the name of the fetch food method. So there's my fetch food method. So what I do is I create these two threads, and then I print out the line that says, okay, I'm relaxing. Now, in my I have a while loop here. So I say while MTV hungry and MTV thirsty, right? While those two are, while hungry and thirsty are true, 
If not, drink Fetcher is alive. So there's a is alive property which returns a Boolean that says, hey, my thread's running, right? So if my thread's not running, go ahead and start it, okay? And then I do that to both of the threads. So I go, if uh, not drink fetcher is alive, then drink fetcher dot start, okay? And if food fetcher is not alive, right, then food fetcher dot start. So I have to, st you, you create the thread and then eventually you have to start the thread, okay? So use the, thread start method so drink fetcher dot start okay and then the, the second time around you know this while loop will keep repeating right so i'll print out this console dot write relaxing and what you'll see is relaxing and then you know maybe depending on the speed of the processors associate assigned with this vm you'll see uh you might see the the drink oh just because i've sent the start message to the thread doesn't mean that the thread immediately starts what that sends the message to the operating system that this thread can start whenever you're ready okay so there's no it may appear to you that it's instantaneous that it starts and we may very well see um fetching drinks right before we get a relaxing printed out um that may or may not occur right and uh, so we'll see how it, how it runs. So let's go ahead and take a look at this code and, you know, run in. Uh, so I got to change to the multi-threaded directory. Okay, so that's uh, chapter 16, multi-threaded vacation. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and change there. And compile. Okay, and run it. Well, like, you know, let me clear the screen. Okay, so. All right, here we roll. All right, so that was a lot of stuff printing out, right? But what we see, we see a whole lot more relaxing, right? And so, so what we did get was relaxing printed out first and then we got fetching drinks with a few dots and then you know then that thread got swapped out so relaxing 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 okay and then some more dots so that fetching drinks thread actually got a couple turns at the processor uh, before the fetching food let's find fetching food here Okay, I'm scrolling. I see fetching drinks. Fetching drinks. Oh, fetching food. Here's fetching food right here. So there's fetching food. Okay. Then I'm still fetching drinks, so I'm fetching food and fetching drinks. So there was... It looks like there's not a whole lot of time between the, you know, writing to the console, relaxing, and starting fetching drinks. And... Probably the most amount of time that this processor spends doing something is actually writing something to the console. So that's 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 a consideration there. All right. So as it's writing this stuff to the console, you know, it's given the fetching drinks and the and the main thread a lot of time. Even though I started those guys right after the each other, this thing, you know, got some the fetching drinks thread. Now you're going to see different results based on the number of processors you have, how fast your computer is running. Uh, okay, so those are two considerations. Um, but anyway, as you can see, a lot more relaxing is going on. And then eventually fetching food runs to completion. So fetching drinks finishes up first because it started first and then fetching food finishes up last. And uh, it looks like it got a whole bunch of in there at the last moment. All righty. Uh, so that's uh, how the code looks for this. Okay, let's uh, return to the book. So we went through single-threaded vacation and multi-threaded vacation. And uh, now let's talk about thread states. And this is on starts on page 455. 
So a thread can assume uh, different states during the, its execution lifetime. So we'll take a look at this picture here. Uh, you don't have to memorize this diagram. I think the important thing to know is um, when you send the start method uh, to a thread, okay, um, it's in the unstarted state until the operating system starts it running, okay? So there's no guarantee uh, when exactly that's going to take place, okay? So then, like I said, that's up to the operating system. Once it's in the running state, it can be put in the background, okay? Um, you set the property, you know, you can make it a background process, um, uh, a thread, I should say. You can send a suspend a method, right? You can call the suspend method on it, and then the resume method, and you can call sleep wait join, right? One of those methods, and uh, it's in the sleep wait join. In other words, the thread's blocked at that point. You can uh, uh, you can uh, request the thread be stopped. Well, uh, stop requested, I should say. You can uh, send abort, right? Um, and then abort requested, and it goes into the aborted state for a little while, and then into the stopped. Um, you know, even though you can do all these things to a thread, right? Really, Microsoft recommends don't trying to, you know, micromanage the thread because sometimes it, you know, it just doesn't work. Um, so, you know, the what it boils down to, I think, is you create a thread, right? You give it some task you know, some method to execute. Um, you can put it, you can make it a background process if you want, and I'll go into the difference um, uh, between background and foreground processes or threads here in a second. Essentially, if you got a foreground thread, that thread will keep running if your main method uh, finishes execution, okay? Um, if you have a background thread, then the thread will terminate when the main thread that called it terminates, Okay. Um, wait, sleep, and join. These method calls, you know, like I say, sometimes you have to dive a little deeper into what those um, methods do. And, and generally speaking, like I say, you know, this next paragraph says it all underneath of the diagram. Uh, the Microsoft documentation um, says, you know, it's hard to tell precisely what state a thread is actually in. Or more importantly, at what point in the code the thread is at when you attempt to move it from one state to another. So it's usually never a good idea to call abort. Um, another thing to consider is that suspend and resume methods are now obsolete. So, you know, that's an obsolete method. Suspend and resume is an obsolete method. Okay. Um, but they still have the states. The threads still have those states there. So, um, we move on to creating and starting managed threads. Uh, so we've seen this, right? We, if we want to create a thread, we, uh, we, you know, declare a new thread reference, and then we say new thread. Okay. And there's a couple different ways. First off, the longhand method. We take a look at um, this section of code right here. Okay. Uh, if I say I want to create a thread and I say call it thread1 equals new thread, and then I have a thread start delegate. In other words, um, I've been using the, the shorthand for my code. I give it the name of a method, okay? And uh, if the method that I'm going to call or use to create a thread with doesn't take any arguments, then um, it's a thread start delegate. So this would be the way to explicitly call the thread start delegate. So it's a new thread start and then pass in the name of the method. But nowadays, um, I think as, as of uh, .NET 2.0, um, all you have to do is just give it the name of the method, right? That's So if you have a method called run and you want to create a thread, you just say thread and then, you know, give it a reference equals new thread run, right? That'd be the name of the method that that thread's going to run, Okay. So uh, there's some example code for thread start demo on the following page. Okay. So we can uh, take a look at this code and how it executes. Go back up here. So let's go to 
thread start. Okay. So I'm going to clear the screen. I'm going to change directory to the thread start directory. And I'm going to compile it. Okay, and then run it. Okay, so we get out, uh, we get, what we get as an output is one and then two and then one, right? So let's take a look at the code. Let me pull up uh, Notepad++ and throw this class in there. There we go. Let me bring that down a little bit. Thread start demo. Okay, so uh, this code's not very complicated. I've got a count. Okay, which is a private field, integer, 200. I have a method called run. So it's a static method this time. For int i equals zero, i less than count, i plus plus, console.write, thread.current, thread.name. Okay, so um, I can set the name of a thread, which I'm going to show you in the main method here. And, I'm, and just for 200 times, I'm going to write out the name of that thread. So here I've got thread um, in my main method here. I'm in the body of my main method. I've got thread, thread1 equals new thread, and the longhand way would be new thread start, and then pass in the name of the method to that method, the thread start delegate. So in the case, we're going to use the run method, right? So the run method is defined right here. That's the longhand way. And the shorthand way is just passing the name of the method without creating a new thread start delegate. So uh, thread, thread2 equals new thread run. Now thread1 uh, dot name equals uh, 1. I gave it a string 1. And then thread1 dot start. Thread2 dot name equals 2. And thread2 dot start. Okay, so I create two threads. Thread1, thread2. I give the first thread a uh, name of, you know, one and the second thread the name of two and then I start each one so the first thread starts running let's go back to the output the first thread starts running and then it gets preempted and then the second thread starts running and then the first thread starts running or runs to completion I should say okay so essentially it looks like uh, thread two runs to complete thread one starts and then it gets a few licks in uh, and then thread two cranks up and then it runs to completion and then thread uh, uh, one runs to completion. Okay. Okay, that's, uh, that's that part. So let's go back to the book. Now, if I want to pass in an argument to a thread, I have to use a parameterized thread start delegate. Okay, passing in an argument to a thread. Uh, so far, I've been creating threads with no arguments, okay? But the difference is, if I want to call a method um, that takes a parameter, right, then it has to be an object. That's the, that's the delegate, the parameterized thread start method signature is, a, is an object, okay? I can pass in any type of object, and if I have to, I can convert the object into... Um, whatever type that I expect, but I have to pass in an object, okay, or at least the argument is an object. And then inside the body of this method that I'm running, if I need to cast that to its proper type, that's where I need to do that. And we'll see real life examples of that when uh, you get to chapter 19 and we talk about multi-threaded client server application programming passing in, you know, refer objects to the thread start method, okay? So let's look at the code. Uh, let's see this in action, um, run some code. So I'm going to change directories to parameterize thread start. Okay. Uh, first off, let's take a look at the code. Okay, so here I have um, a count. I have a run method. This time I have, I'm passing in an object with a value. Okay, so um, instead of setting the name of the thread, I'm going to pass in 
a string to the thread, okay? And in this particular case, I don't need to cast it to uh, to a string because when I say console.write, it's just going to say value.toString, and the object has a toString method which will print out, you know, what I'm what I send it. So I create my threads using the long, uh, parameterized thread start. Notice here on line 23 that I'm creating a new parameterized thread start, right? Because my run method has has a an argument that that it it's going to be passed to it. And then I show you the shorthand way, which looks exactly the same as doing it, you know, the old thread start way. So, but it knows it's a parameterized thread start because this run method takes a an uh, object argument. Okay, so um, when I start now, I call the start method. This is where I pass in my object to my run method. So thread one dot start hello, okay, and thread two dot start world. Now let's see this code run. So let me go back to parameterized thread start. and compile it. Okay, now I'll run it. Well, let me clear the screen. Okay, now I get an intermix of hello and world. So sometimes I might get hello, 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 like up here, and then I get world, 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 world. Sometimes I might get a hello and a world right after each other, but that'd be pretty rare. All right, because uh, you know my processor's not running that fast. Or that's slow, I should say. All right, so, you know, I get an intermix of hello and world. World, 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 hello, hello, hello. So, um, anyway, that's how you pass in an object to a uh, parameterized thread start delegate. Okay, let's return to the book. Oh, okay, now, the rest of this uh, section, blocking the thread with sleep, um blocking the thread with thread.join and uh, foreground versus background threads. I think what I'll do is I'll skip these two. Um, I'll let you just read up on those and I'll talk about foreground versus background threads. A thread can be either a foreground thread or a background thread. The difference being that a foreground thread will keep the .NET runtime alive as long as it's running. and a, But a background thread will be shut down uh, as soon as the .NET runtime shuts down. Now, how does that manifest itself? Um, if we take a look at this code example here, I've got a, a run method. Keep going equals true. While keep going. So in other words, keep running, right? And please enter a letter Q to exit. Uh, please enter a letter or Q to exit. So I'm just going to read line. If I read in a, um, a string, I'm going to get the first character of that string and I'm going to check and see if it's Q. So if it's Q, capital Q, keep going equals false. Otherwise, break. Keep on going. All right, so this is a, um, uh, in this particular example, this is a foreground thread demo. So let's go ahead and look at the code um, and run the program, I should say. So I'm going to uh, change directory. Foreground thread. And then uh, CSC. That's CS, okay. Compile that and then I'll clear the screen one more time and do um, run the program okay uh, hit return now it says please enter a letter or Q to exit so I'm gonna just enter any old letter and it keeps on going see how it's you know my program doesn't exit until I enter a capital Q so I enter a Q then my program exits you're like, okay, that's riveting. All right, but let me let me show you what happens if we change it to a background. Okay, so let me open up my folder here. Let's go to background thread. Now, the only change 
between this, I'll open this up in Notepad++, is I changed the background state or the, you know, changed the state to a background thread. So all this code is the same. I got uh, keep going equals true. This is all the same. Except now, down here in my main method, I create my thread and I say thread one is background equals true. So I put it into a background thread. Now, what happens is like for a thread normally, right? I got this thread running. It will keep the main method going or it will keep the .NET runtime running, I should say. As long as that thread's running, the .NET runtime keeps running for a fourth foreground thread. As soon as I set this to, to true, that it's a background thread and this main method exits, we'll be very lucky if we get anything out of this thread because it will just stop because it's no longer, the, the main method is no longer running and it's not a foreground thread, so it'll quit, all right? So let's compile it and see how it runs, okay? So I'm gonna change directories to the background thread directory. And, okay, uh, compile it and clear the screen and run. So background thread demo. Okay, ready? And watch because it'll be quick. Boom, nothing happened. Well, it did happen. You know, we set the background to true and we sent the start message, but you know, hey, it's a background thread. So as soon as the main method exited, that thread no longer is running. So it probably was on the thread scheduler to get started, but then no need to start it because the it's containing process exited. All right, let's return to the book one more time. And, and that pretty much does it, um, okay, for managed threads, okay? You got, essentially, you got thread... Uh, you have multiple thread states. You got the thread class. You can create a thread with a couple different um, parameterized threads. Oh, I'm sorry, with a couple different delegate types. It can be a thread start delegate if your method that you're running has no argument. If you have a th argument you need to pass, it has to be an object. Okay, so if you need to pass multiple values to a parameterized thread start method, then that object could be like an array, right? It could be a it could be a user defined type that has multiple fields, but it can't be multiple things, right? It just has to be an object. Um, don't try to overmanage your thread. You know, create the thread, stop or start the thread, and let it run. Really, I think you're um, you're probably trying to manage it too closely because there's no really telling where that thread is in terms of state and code execution. Okay. The next section would be creating threads with background worker class, which I'm going to devote to another video. And this is kind of helpful because this allows you to create more responsive user interface, uh, user interfaces. If you ever ran an application, you clicked on a button to do something, and it looks like the UI froze while something was happening in the background, but you couldn't tell because your UIs froze up. It could have been improved. The user experience could have been vastly improved by the use of background worker class threads. And that's the topic of the next video. So I appreciate you joining this lecture and uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Um, uh, if you have any questions, you know how to email me. Um, and I'll see you in the next lecture.